Well, the question today is, is tubeless better than clincher? Does tubeless offer all the things that Scissors does? Now, if you look at what tubeless are offering, they're offering you free puncture ride. So it's designed in a way that the sealant fixes your punctures. If you get any punctures, it also has less membranes that are connected to the, the rim. So it should give you a nicer, softer ride. And you don't have to take a tube or anything else with you with the tubeless if you get roll over a fawn or somebody gives you a puncture. Yes, if there's a big cut, the sealant may not be able to fix it, but they're rare. So what tubeless is offering is a puncture-free ride, and all you need to do is spend a little bit more time setting it up. And this is basically the Xanadu technology of cycling flats. But is that really the case? So let's roll it into on this, have a look at what could go wrong with tubeless and why I still think the clincher is really the everyday go-to technology that we should be all using. Now, there's a guy I follow called George Vargas, and he's over there in the States, and he's actually a bicycle mechanic, and he's got his own little shop there, and he actually has some really good tips that you can give you cyclists, and he has a few little hashtags he likes to use. So go check him out, and give him a like, and give him a subscribe, because he's offering some really good information. And he's been working with Tubeless for over a decade, and his latest videos, which were actually three of them, he put up was about fitting a tubeless tire and it was kind of one of those things where it was supposed to be a quick change he was just about to go out on a seven hour endurance ride with some friends that was a group ride and his tire had lost a significant amount of air overnight and he wondered why so i thought okay then well what i'll do is is i'll just take that tire off and i'll put some more sealant in and i'll put a new tire on and i'll just do that before the ride in the morning and off we go and everything will be hunky-dory beautiful but in reality he had quite a lot of difficulty going through and fixing this tire and he probably went through i'd probably say maybe between 100 to 150 dollars us retail products to get that tire fixed and he also spent some considerable time doing that and in the process he got sealant everywhere it was all over him it was on his legs it was all over the floor now he's got a workshop so it doesn't matter but if you've got a missus at home then she might get a little bit upset with sealant being all over the floor and over everything and uh how are you going to clean that up because that stuff's actually pretty hard to remove now i don't know what george used he must have had some sort of solvent to clean his rims off he didn't actually show that in the videos but that is actually an issue with the sealant because the sealant is messy so what we need to work out is is when we go from a clincher to a tubeless we actually replace the tube for the sealant and there's a number of different sealants on the product that make claims and in this case george was using the new silka sealant which i've done a video on before and silka are really promising some really significant gains with that sealant and it's a lot more effective at fixing flats so how did george go with doing and having this on the run fixed to his bike well he actually had some significant difficulties and what he did he used the michelin tire first he couldn't get that to seal and because he was working quickly taking the tire on and off the sealant went everywhere and then he couldn't get that to work so then he changed to a continental tubeless tire same thing he couldn't get that to work so eventually he ripped that off and then he found that the tape that came on the Duros wheel had basically started to become a bit brittle and it caused a hole where the spoke area was. So I retaped that and then he put the tire back on and then it blew another hole in the tape. So eventually he replaced the tape and then he put the tire on, got the whole thing working. But he'll, his other group ride people were waiting for all this time and he did film it, which was really good by George because we get to see not the positive sides of this technology, but also the negative sides of this technology, which us everyday people need to deal with from time to time. And that was that these tubeless tires are a little bit more faffing around than having a tube in a clincher tire.
Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of George's Rants. So over the last two rides, this Michelin tire that I set up tubeless <laughs> um, has been leaking air overnight and I'm wondering what, what the heck's going on. So I've actually been holding a conversation with another gentleman named Ivan and uh, you know, we were both doing some troubleshooting steps on the video. Well, um, today, just getting ready to roll out within, I don't know, 20, 30 feet of the freaking driveway, the tire just freaking literally exploded. I mean, there's sealant freaking everywhere. So, okay, we're gonna put a new tire in. And um, this is what the inside of the tire looks when you're using this new Silka sealant, which is what I am trying to evaluate now. So this Silka sealant has these little carbon fiber bits in it. To me, the problem, the biggest thing that I don't like about the tubeless technology is the, the way that they haven't standardized the fit from tires to rim. And even George points this out, the Continental tire is a lot more difficult to get on than the Michelin tire. You have to use tapes. The tape, it's very important that you use a really good tape and the tape is sealed correctly. The valves need to be put on really well because that's another weak spot for the tire to go flat because the sealant needs to seal and hold all of these slight little air leaks that may be inside the tube because there is inside the tire because there is no tube. And also the rim becomes a integral part of the air chamber which we don't have in a tube tire because the tube's enclosed and the other thing that i've mentioned in other videos is the tubeless tire is designed quite differently it might look the same but it has threads in it that are unstretchable and that's what actually holds the tire on the the technology of the tire is significantly different to the older clincher type tires because we have a clincher type tire you have a closed membrane that's putting pressure on the hook that's holding that hook in place but when you have a tubeless you have no membrane putting pressure on the hook to hold it in place so you need to rely on the fact that the tire cannot stretch to to allow it to balloon and then come off the rim and this is why tubeless tires inherently are more difficult to get on because they don't flex you can't stretch them and that's why the new more modern rims now have a well in the middle and you've got to try and push that hooked part of the tire into that well all the way around so you can get a little bit more space to get on when you're at the opposite side of the rim now when you go through all of this process you really have to ask yourself the setup time and everything that you do is it really worth the fact of when you get a flat on the side of the road is that faffing about really worth the amount of time you spend on the side of the road just changing a tube because we know it doesn't take that long to change a tube and we're all pretty skilled at it if we ride a lot and you can get it out you just check that there's no there's no holes or, or fawns still in the tire so you need to remove them otherwise you'll get another flat you take your tube out the tube's pretty light and then you fit it in you just make sure it's not creased anywhere and you pump it up and away you go and if you've got a a a co2 chamber then it pumps it up very quick and you've got to remember you can't use those co2s with the sealant because it makes the sealant go hard so you need to pump it by hand so these are the negatives that you need to consider when you're running tubeless and my question today is is all that faff worth just carrying another tube in your back pocket or two tubes and if you get a flat just changing the tube on the side of the road which if you're skilled may take you maybe three to five minutes depending on how skilled you are or if you're using a canister or whatever because you still a tubeless doesn't guarantee you're not going to get a flat you can still get flats so that is that is the the trade-off if if tubeless tires gave you a completely 100 percent flat reduction I could say yes that faffing around would be worth the um, or should I say the juice is worth to squeeze when it comes to fitting that tire on the bike because then you would have peace of mind then you don't have to carry a tube but even now if you run tubeless you still need to carry a tube just in case you get a cut or a bigger hole that the sealant can't fix and then 
you're still, well, you're still carrying that extra weight of that tube and then you've got to deal with all that mess of the sealant. Oh, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and I think this is video number three, at least number three in the series of frustration with trying to mount a tire. In a previous video, I discovered a hole in the factory installed tape, tubeless tape. And so I patched it, put the new tire on and psh, it leaked out again. I'm like, what the heck's going on? I know I patched the, the hole, another hole, a new hole. So, um, this, and I want you to come closer, sir. So I want you to, to pay attention to that sound. It's, it's, it's nearly brittle. Now this was the factory installed tape by Shimano. Now there is a third option that was used when they had clinches and Slime had it. And I never saw them here in Australia, but I know people in America were able to get them. They were a tube. And what they were is they were filled with like a slime, which basically a top of sealant. And you could put this tube in your tire. And when you got a puncture, what would happen is, is that that sealant or slime in that tube would come out and seal it. And I've actually done this. I've done this with, with clinches where I've put sealant, fitted sealant into tubes. The only thing is you need to buy a tube that has a removable valve. So it's very easy to get the sealant in. And once you do that, you can get the sealant in pretty easy. And then you're running the sealant in the enclosed chamber. So... If you get a flat and the sealant can't fix it, you haven't you have a little bit of sealant to deal with because obviously you'll have a tiny hole, but you don't have the same mess that you have when you deal with a full tubeless and all that free throwing sealant in there. And then you can easily easily change that tube, maybe just and then just chuck that, that tube of the sealant in, in the bin when you get to the next bin and away you go. And you haven't had to deal with that mess and get all that mess all over you. And I think that's actually another option that a lot of people or the manufacturers aren't really pushing and I think is still very viable, even if it doesn't fix 100% of the flats as, as tubeless would, you may get 80 or 90, which is almost there. And tubeless is not guaranteeing it's gonna fix every flat anyway. So in conclusion, I think we all need to really be realistic about this tubeless technology. Now, some people have had great success with it, and I'm not talking about the mountain bike, I'm talking about the road where you're using higher pressures because that's what limits the sealant's ability. And I think really, even though it's been around for a long time, I, I know for a fact it's been around for at least 10 years, probably a bit longer, and they're still working on perfecting these things. And now we've got sealant and we've also got inserts. That's what the manufacturers are pushing, especially Victoria, they're, they're, they're pushing using a a insert special insert which sounds like a pretty good device and the sealant so even if the sealant doesn't work or you get a flat you've still got this insert to keep the tire semi-inflated so you can continue to ride on it and get yourself home and that may actually work and cover a hundred percent of your flats but you really have to ask yourself is it really worth buying this insert which is not cheap and you need special tools to get it on because it's extremely difficult to fit these inserts. I don't know if anyone's put inserts in tires, but they are a real bugger to get in. So you've got to go for all this flaff, then you've got to fill up the sealant, and then you've got sealant management. A number of the sealants do go hard between three and six months. You need to add them. So then when you pull your tire off, you've got all of this sealant and everything to manage. So for when you mount the next tire. And the question I have to you guys is, for those people who've run tubeless, those people who've tried it, or they've gone back to clinches, or they've stayed with tubeless, what's your experience? Because from what I see, and what I've seen George go through, and even George's comments about how much he charges to fit tubeless, because they are difficult to fit, is the faff really, really worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? For all that you go through, does it really give you the security that you want when you're out riding your bike? Or do you find that when you get a flat, if you do get a flat and if the tubeless system doesn't work, how you manage that out in the field, do you put a tube in, how do you manage with all that sealant and deal with those punctures? Okay guys, that's where I'm gonna leave it. Leave your comments down below, your experiences with tubeless. Did you go back to clinches or if you're stuck with tubeless? 
your pros and cons that you've had with them, and I will see you next vid. Cheers.